Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and uh, uh, <laughs> I fell asleep. I, I fell asleep. Yeah, I fell asleep uh, in the last few hours of the pandemic. After spending a, a, a month telling people not to sleep on this project, I did. So, uh, pandemic at uh, 2 a.m. local, midnight uh, Pacific, ended its 30-day campaign. I completely intended <laughs> to... Click the single box that would have turned it into an in-demand store, but I fell asleep. I was watching Legend, that movie with Tom Hardy where he, he plays the Cray twins, and it starts off pretty good, and then it gets really boring and repetitive, and I still had an hour to go. So I started watching five minutes of Goodfellas, and then five minutes of The Legends trying to work my way through it, and then I just, I just fell asleep right after... Uh, Lorraine Bracco uh, yelled at the main character for uh, standing her up on a date. Um, uh, but uh, anyway, um, uh, I woke up and, I, and that was my first thought. I was like, oh, I'm supposed to put it in, in demand. So if you missed out on it, um, I'm going to put on Jawbreakers Grand Bazaar. There is going to be a perk tier that's going to be Jawbreakers Grand Bazaar. And we'll print some extra, you know, pandemic. And, and there'll be enough. Don't worry. And that, that just starts in like two weeks, 13 days. So, um... I thought I'd do a little after action about pandemic, but also about promoting in general because an amazing thing happened. Like it was doing good. It was doing solid. I expected this to do about 35 to 50,000 and it did 53. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, yesterday it was having that, you know, final good day. Um, and then I did a video where I just spent like one minute discussing the plot. Now I had assumed I had mentioned it in enough prior videos that everyone knew the plot, so if they weren't buying it, it just didn't interest them. But uh, people whose names I recognize very well, who comment constantly, were like, oh, that's what it's about? I didn't know. I was just guessing. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to buy it right now. Um, so if I go into Campaign Insights, it'll show what I'm talking about. This is, uh, this is a, a really great. The only problem with Campaign Insights is it doesn't... I'm not sure what 24 hour, like when it starts, uh, because sometimes your first day, how am I explaining this? If you start a one campaign at 2 p.m. and another one at 6 p.m., um, you'll see a difference in your, uh, but I'm not sure what their demarcation is for like where they chop the days. Cause you can see like, there's this day that goes up to like 9,000, you know, there's like a ton of people. And then there's this like this teeny tiny day of zero dollars like what what's up with that um i guess that's today maybe since it crossed into 2 a.m but it counts it for the i don't know so that gets a little wonky right there um but uh as you can see the last day did better than the first day now that does happen sometimes but sometimes not and we can see a, a you know pretty uh, nice curve and then uh a, but a, a pretty big spike i mean this is a big from that second to last day and it was because I literally just described it. <laughs> I, had, I had assumed, I had assumed all the you know the people who were in the audience had, had known it. So knowing that, I thought about it. And people have requested this a couple times, but I was like, well, I always kind of rejected the idea. They're like, why don't you do a video like repitching your stuff and telling you where you are? I was like, don't, I feel like I kind of do that at the beginning, but I need like a full pitch. And I'm thinking. At first, I was like, what should be the increment? Should it be once a month? It's like, well, no, because and if you, you can miss it once, and then you will never. So I'm saying, uh, I'd say every two to three weeks. Uh, probably, you know, every, you know, three weeks is fine. Um, and then I'll just do a rundown of where every single project is at and kind of repitch it and give you updates, you know, because sometimes things kind of uh, change. So, uh, uh, okay, so that's by Mount Rays. Let me go by uh, Contributions. So yeah, it's gonna look the same because there was only one perk tier. Um, but there were 362 people on the last day and there was 347 on the first day. So I'm really happy about that. Um, so the lesson for me is pitch it. So I probably, you know, I pitched it here and it did good. I probably should have done a video right about here, probably another video here and then a video right there. And uh, actually, so that would be like, what is this? The 18th. 
Oh, yeah. So maybe I uh, 10 days. I oh, know it right there, right there. That's a sweet spot right there. So probably every two weeks I should do um, some kind of video. I'll probably make them Saturday. Is this today? Saturday? It's Saturday, right? That's good. Saturdays are boring. There's usually not much news. Um, usually on Sunday, somebody's done something stupid and it's in all the comic book news. So I got stuff to talk about on Sunday. But Saturday is kind of low. So I'd say probably like every other Saturday morning, I'll have a little, you know, uh, a video and I'll just talk about all the stuff that's going on um, so that you don't sleep on it. I don't sleep on it. Maybe I'll call it crowdfunding alarm clock, you know, um, and then give a, a subtitle. So um, just to, uh, you know, reiterate, uh, uh, pandemic exceeded expectations, but it could have exceeded, exceeded them if I, actually, I'm, I'm not blaming myself. I'm blaming legend. Like you need gunfights and gangster movies. Like at one point, there's the same character who's done something sketchy and uh, uh, Reggie, yeah, Reggie uh, it pretends to be nice and pretends to be forgiving and then punches him. And then like in the middle, it's basically the exact same scene. Now, yeah, I'm guessing they're probably gonna set up that that guy rats him out later, but it's like, you really need like some escalation, you know, like, that's one of the things that keeps like the uh, the cartels so interesting. They'll just bust out, and I'm talking in real life, RPGs. You know, you'll hear it from the rumor like uh, there was an RPG shot, and it was like right near the border. You're like, yeah, whatever. That that's a weapon of war. That doesn't happen. Um, but uh, then the next day in the news, you're like, so and so cartel fired a you know RPG seven blah blah, and you're like, oh okay, oh, oh. keeps it interesting. You got you got to escalate. You can't start with someone being punched and then an hour people are just being punched uh it's not funny it's not fun um but uh so uh pandemic started because it was right when the pandemic or the the shutdowns were starting and i was seeing these images of empty san francisco <coughs> empty los angeles and all i could think about is wow that's a lot of places to rob no actually i was very sad i was very heartbroken i was like um, this is not good. This is not good for pretty much everyone. Um, I saw the data, especially back then, and I thought the prediction, the predictions were ridiculous and, uh, designed to instill not just caution, but outright terror. Again, this is, do you remember a month ago when they were saying two to 4 million people dead? Um, uh, and then, uh, so I was like, I don't like this. And I had some stuff I wanted to get off my chest. I wanted to express myself. I also was really disgusted at, at that was, uh, that was about a week before the industry had collapsed, but you were already seeing the signs that it was going to happen. And I was like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, sit down. I'm going to, oh, sounds so cheesy. I'm going to stand up. I'm not going to fire people. I'm going to hire people. Um, cause I planned for stuff like this. Um, and so it was, it was a confluence of, you know, wanting to be active when I was told to be passive, wanting to hire people when, you know, people were being fired or furloughed or laid off or whatever you want to call it. Um, uh, and, oh, geez, I just realized I, I, uh, not to pat myself on the back. I think I predicted a couple days just, uh, happened. So Ethan Van Skyver was talking about the, um, uh, Patrick Zercher got the pencils down, but it wasn't a, you know, stop everything. It was your next project is not going to start. I just described, I just, it was like four days ago. I did the video where I predicted that. Wow. Okay. It's cool. So I mean, it's not cool, but yeah. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so I, I, and I wanted to express myself and I wanted to make some money. Um, uh, that being said, it's still a sensitive topic. People are actually dying from this pandemic. So I kind of dialed it down. It was the lowest price point I've ever had on, you know, any crowdfunder. It was one book. There were no perks. There were no extras. There was no pinups or tchotchkes or anything like that. I just kind of tried to keep it very, fairly serious. Um, and uh, it actually exceeded uh, slightly my uh, point of failure. I I've told, uh, I've told uh, Ibai, I go, we'll make Ironsight's books until they fall below what I consider failure. And failure to me is less than 2,000 backers. Um, so this uh, this uh, little engine that could exceeded that. So, so as you don't sleep on anything else, <laughs> you got Expendables Go to Hell. 
This one is uh, actually uh, ahead of schedule, and it'll probably end up being just on time because um, there's still a couple pages that need to be colored, and then it does need to be lettered, but lettering tends to go very quickly. Um, and uh, this one is fantastic. Graham Nolan turned in the, his final pages. He started off good, and he just got. And you see this in um, like you know like a, a monthly run that you know the artist will start and they kind of will. How do I say this? They're not familiar, so they just you know what I'm saying is if you've got a long run of a, of a artist on a book, usually it takes a couple months for them to really click with the characters. They're just kind of doing it as if it's just you know generic hero body but then they start like kind of like oh let's you know make uh, batman's ears taller you know let's make uh, gordon's glasses thicker maybe give him a little bit, bit of a beer belly um and it, they kind of make it their own so he started off good but it was really exciting to see him progress and really get familiar with the characters and by the end it feels like you know a guy who's been on, a, on an awesome two-year run of a monthly expendables comic which by the way i've I would love to do uh, if uh, the logistics of that would work out. Um, uh, but uh, so that's all tracking. Um, just I'll go through it again. We got the uh, we hit the stretch goals. One of them we actually hit twice, <laughs> which was the large sticker. I canceled a chromium. So you got the uh, the hardcover, which right now is pretty much um, vying with the soft cover for you know being just as popular. So it's a hardcover plus pinup. I, I kept it simple with the pinups. The pinup is whatever the cover art is. So you got a book, that's gonna be the, that, this is the, the basic version, that's the Kelsey, fantastic art, we're getting the lettering done. Here's the Billy Tucci, uh, there's your boy, um, here's uh, Jason Johnson, and then here's uh, Renzo, who uh, did um, Pandemic. Uh, t-shirt, I'm still deciding on the image for the t-shirt. Uh, two pack, that's gonna be two versions of the Kelsey uh, uh, book and pinup. The reason I do these two packs is to help out I'm doing it like I'm, like, like your charity cases. It advantages people who are uh, international because postage is, is so high for international. But weirdly enough, it doesn't get much higher if you send two books instead of one. So basically the idea is wherever, you know, country you're in, you find a friend, you know, and then you, you split it and then you basically end up paying half as much for postage as you would have. Then there's the t-shirt book and the pinup, which I don't know. I know everyone says t-shirts, t-shirts, but yeah, maybe since I didn't show off the image, that's why. Eh, I've never done that great with t-shirts. Uh, the Meyer sign book, I, <laughs> I feel like I've signed too many things. I signed all of Jawbreaker's God King. Uh, did I sign Iron Sights? I don't think I did. I don't think I did. I, th I, I signed Iron Sights for a charity campaign and then... Did I sign all Lost Souls as well? I think I did. I think I signed all of both of them. Um, so th <laughs> there's not a lot of value in a, in a Meyer signature right now. So I'm probably gonna just gonna skip it for the next few. Uh, there might be like a premium, but people weren't that crazy. Maybe it was the price point. I'll have to review all this type of stuff. All five books, which is a great deal. Um, so all five books and all five pinups. Um, uh, that one's uh, it's too solid. My sketch plus book plus pinup. Nobody gives a damn about that one. Uh, the Billy Tucci uh, variant art that's actually on a, a board. That one's still available. Dave Dorman. That's uh, painted, you know, uh, on a uh, canvas. Uh, all the Stallone signed books are sold out. Jason Johnson original art sold. My art sold. No, oh, I kind of forgot to. So yeah. So here's Aaron Alfici. He did uh, a two pages um, summary of the franchise. If you if you don't know about him that well. Here's, um, I don't know why this, okay, yeah, okay, fine. Obviously the internet's a little slow today. So here's the top two thirds of some of the pages. Um, wow, that's really infuriating. Okay, so I'm gonna just scroll to the bottom and let all of that stuff populate. And it's like, it's like I'm on Bleeding Cool or something like that. And then there's Iron Sights to Psychos. Um, so the main reason I was gonna put Pandemic into an in-demand store is because Iron Sights 2 Psychos was supposed to come out before Pandemic started, or at least was supposed to be fulfilled before it ended. So I was like, you know, if you're waiting on your Iron Sights, you don't want to back Pandemic until you, you get your Iron Sights. I understand, but it didn't quite work out like that. Um, uh, so uh, that's being mailed out. I think some of them probably went out 
oh, probably went going out today, and then the rest will probably go out Monday and Tuesday. Um, so you should be getting this uh, very, very quickly. And uh, we did overprint uh, slightly, so it's still in demand. I'm probably going to shut down this in demand at the end of the month, um, and then we'll reassess how many uh, extras we have. And then uh, I'll probably just wait for Iron Sights 3 to sell those extras. So are you done, Expendables Go to Hell? Are you good? Did you have enough time? Are you a little sleepy? I get sleepy sometimes too. So here's the original promotional art by Graham. It's a little ad we did. Billy Tucci variant. Your boy Zach variant. Renzo variant. Uh, Jason Johnson variant. Here's the uh, Butch Geist pages, which are just absolutely freaking amazing. Look at this stuff. Here's the uh, one of the pages from the Kelsey Shannon. Uh, I wrote this one. The, it's we call them side quests. They're not. They're there's a main story and then there's these side quests that weave in and out. Then here's a side quest I wrote uh, art by Jason Johnson, and then here's some of the fantastic. <laughs> I love when he chucks the Valkyrie off the uh, winged zombie horse. This is the uh, colored art by. Um, Graham Nolan. Look at this. All right, so uh, so that was my Saturday morning uh, review, whatever you want to call it. I'm interested if you got a if you got a suggestion for the name of this. Like I said, it'll probably be every other week on a Saturday morning, uh, where I just get you caught up to speed on what's happening with all of the active. Uh, that'll be, that'll be in that'll include the initial thirty day campaign. And in demand store, if I forget, if I don't forget, if I remember, put it on like I meant to. Anyway, so thanks for watching. Subscribe, make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the GoFundMe, the Patreon, and the Indiegogos. Jawbreakers uh, Grand Bazaar is going to launch on May 1st. Very excited about that. I'm also really excited about the uh, Dan Frega uh, Black Flag Pineapple Constitution. Something like that. that um, uh, that's coming out, I believe, April 24th or 25th. So he's been showing me promotional videos on that, and they're fantastic. So I'm really excited about packing that one. And uh, I think, hey, I think I'm going to uh, dig through the... I, I got the expendable trade paperback that, that uh, Chuck Dixon wrote like 10 years ago. So I'll probably re review that, and it might get a little awkward. <laughs> thanks. Thanks for watching. Bye.